Hello, I am from the Revival Fellowship Centers International. Are you just? Yes I am. I come to you in peace, to share our good news gospel. You will never be the same again. Oh no. Oh no oh no oh no. What good news is that? The world is going to end very soon, but you can be saved from death. And the superfluity of naughtiness to come. Really, and how exactly do I get saved by your standards? Repent of your sin. Right. Be baptized by full immersion. Okay. And receive ye the Holy Spirit. With the Bible evidence of speaking in tongues. As proof that you are spirit-filled and thrilled. With the Holy Ghost. And fire. That's quite a mouthful. Yes. It's awesome. Is it not? It is not. No. So, why not? It is not scripturally accurate. We revivalists have the exact same experience as the original church did when the Spirit was first poured out. Okay, let's see. Acts 2. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. Did you experience that? No. No, I did not. They saw what looked like tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Did that happen to you? No. No, it did not. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Did that happen to you? Yes. Yes, it did. But read on. Next verse. They were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Did you experience that? No. Then you don't seem to have had the exact same experience at all. A friend of a friend of mine believes that someone in the revival meeting somewhere spoke in tongues and a French person understood it. I think you were clutching at straws with that hearsay. In 1 Corinthians 14 2 it states that when a person speaks in tongues he speaks to God for no man understands him. Then you have quite a contradiction going on. Context reveals that Paul was instructing the church how to run a meeting without confusion when they were preaching in a land of many languages. We believe. We think those things were symbolic. The initial outpouring of the Spirit on the eleven apostles was not a blueprint for all. Excuse me. There were 120 people in the upper room. You could not fit 120 people into those upper rooms. Check the Greek text on that one. Thousands more were baptized that day, but miraculous tongue speaking was not mentioned again. It was prophesied in Isaiah 28 verse 11. For with another tongue, will he speak to this people? I am confused. I thought you said tongues was not for speaking to people. Now I am confused. But Mark 16 tells us that the sign of tongues shall follow the believers. What about all the other signs? We believe most of them to be symbolic. Of course you do. Google proof text. Here is a hint. It does not say that all believers would do all these things. The ability to free vocalize is an amazing gift that all real Christians do. Paul said not to be ignorant. Paul was correcting them. The ecstatic speech practice of the previous religion the Corinthians were involved with was common and predates Christianity. We will have to agree to disagree. I would still like to invite you to a meeting where you can hear lots of people speaking nonsensical gibberish. Hey, I teach grade 1. I hear that all the time.